Welcome again, welcome again, and we are discussing the joy of serving the Lord. Today, we will continue talking about developing your talent, developing your talent, and that is part of serving the Lord, and it gives great joy as we shall see in the case of a man who is known not by so many he is little known, but he is right here in the pages of the Bible, and his story is very inspirational. His name is Ahimaz. You can do a Bible quiz before I pray or as I pray and wonder where is this man in the Bible, the man who is called Ahimaz. He is inspirational, and uh, we will be able to look at his story and draw some lessons on how to develop and continue growing our talents for God's glory to experience the joy of serving the Lord. Heavenly Father, may you speak to us as we read your word. May we not just read, but hear your voice, for that is the voice that we would like to hear, the voice that wakes the dead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, friends, uh, our African parents, many of them, maybe not only in Africa, even elsewhere in the world, many of the parents will have dreams for their children. And uh, parenting is a great aspect of serving the Lord, but parenting is not easy. Dear parent, 
when you are looking after those children, God has given them to you as gifts. Remember that? They are a gift from the Lord. And so you are serving the Lord in doing your best as you bring them up. May the Lord give you the joy. And I know it's not easy because some children have become wayward. Some children have ended up rogues. We thank God for those children who have ended up excellent. And those parents are blessed. They have done their part. God has gifted them and has also granted their heart's desires. Praise the Lord for that. Now, as we talk about gifts, you find that some parents will be very well connected and in agreement with the gifts that rhyme with what they think. You want to be a lawyer? Yes. You want to be a medical doctor? Yes. You, you, want, to be, you, you want to grow in business? Yes. But then some parents will struggle when it comes to, I want to be a sportsman, I want to grow my gift in sport, I want to be a runner, I want to be a footballer, I want to be a netballer, I want to be a volleyballer. Uh, how, on, how on earth should I invest my money in that kind of thing? Where will it take you? Now, we've got to have a balance and know that the gifts from God in these children have to be balanced. And serving the Lord is not complete when you serve the Lord with only part of the gifts God has given you. The counselors will tell us about balance, life balance. An excellent worker needs to, can only be excellent if they are exercising and if they are getting enough sleep. An excellent worker has to have life balance. Balancing technical stuff with social stuff, with cross-cutting stuff. So you don't want an excellent banker who is poor at talking to people, at poor at social skills. You don't want an excellent orator, one who speaks so powerfully, but he cannot keep track of their money, cannot keep track of their accounts. The money will get lost. They will run bankrupt. One time I was reading about Frederick Handel, the guy who composed stuff that we wonder how it resided in his head. Something like the Hallelujah Chorus. Ah! You, you, you hear the way all the voices are going and all the instruments are going and you wonder how did all that stuff reside in the head of one man? And he put it all together. And that's not all. There are many other pieces he put together. His work, Messiah. A very very intricate work but one time he was running bankrupt he, he was running out of money he was actually running broke completely and uh, thank God for how he was bailed out and how he came out of his financial situation but yeah if you have such an excellent musician who is not able to manage money and make collaborations to manage money then there is a lack of balance and that lack of balance can inhibit the gift that should have come out very loudly. So I'm talking about balance, life balance, and imploring us that when we discover, develop, and deploy all the talents and gifts that God has given us, we are serving the Lord who gave those talents and gifts. I'm trying to soften a certain parent who is hard on their child. Concentrate on reading. Concentrate on reading. I know it's exam time, but exams will get finished. Exams will end by December. People will, have been, will be out of exams. There, there is a balance that must be struck. There is a child who is going to struggle when they come from school. They have been reading and reading and reading. And when exams are over, now they don't know what to do because there is nothing to read. So that's why balance is very important. And when someone is stuck and they don't know what to do because exams are gone, they can easily misuse their time and end up in abusive situations. And therefore, balance is important at all times. Let's get inspiration from Ahimaaz, a man that we find in 2 Samuel chapter number 18. 
2 Samuel chapter 18. Verse 22. And Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said again to Joab, But whatever happens, please let me also run after the Cushite. So Joab said, Why will you run, my son, since you have no news ready? But whatever happens, he said, Let me run. So he said to him, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by way of the plain and outran the Cushites. That's just a snippet of a story. And just to bring you to, 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 to the context, this is this time when uh, there was a war in the a, a civil conflict, uh, an in-house war. The son of David, Absalom, had led a revolt. He wanted to take over the kingdom as king. And, and therefore, he was fighting against his father. And uh, the father, David, sent troops to go and fight and fight Absalom. And uh, in that war, in that small conflict, Absalom was killed. When Absalom is killed, he is the enemy of the king. And so Job, the commander, needs someone to take the news to the palace, to the king. And this is not very good news, but it's news of victory. And so uh, someone has to take that news. But because although it's news of victory, it's news of the death of the king's son. Job chose an African, a Cushite, to run with that news. And, and uh, Ahimaaz, who should have gone first, uh, is not able to go. In such times, there were people who are trained, who are talented and trained to run and take news around the entire kingdom. Cross-country runners. That was the only means of transport. There was no border border. There was no car. There was no bicycle. People ran with their feet. Maybe they could use a donkey or a horse, but that was not available at that time. And so a Kushite is sent by the commander Joab to run and take the news over to the king to announce to him two things. Number one is that you are victorious. But number two is that your son is dead. Now Ahimaaz, the one who is not selected at that time, said, I want to run. I want to take the news. Now, the, the, everyone knows that the person who delivers the news first will receive the reward, will receive the present for bringing the news. Now, Job tries to convince Ahimaaz and says, you know what, you will not get anything. You will not get any present because the Kushite has already given you a head start. He has already gone ahead of you. But Ahimaaz pleads and says, I still want to go. Finally, the negotiation ends in letting Ahimaaz run. And then the punchline is from the middle of, middle of verse 23. So he said to him, run. Then Ahimaaz ran by way of the plain and outran the Kushite. In other words, the Kushite who started running first could not arrive before Ahimaaz. Ahimaaz who started running later arrived first. That is an interesting thing. It's the story of a man who is a talented runner, but one who has also mastered geography. He is multiply talented. And we are really enthused, we are encouraged to develop all the talents within us, to, 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 to sharpen the soul. That's what uh, the writer calls it, Stephen Covey, Steve Covey, sharpen the saw, sharpen the saw. To, to, to not just keep it blunt, otherwise it will not cut. Sharpen the saw. Uh, Ahimaaz was not just a runner, one who has trained to run and run and run and run. He also had mastered the roots and the geography and he knows which one will spend less energy, which one will go fastest. I use Google Maps a lot and I have to check which one is the shortest route. But not just shortest, which one will take less time. Sometimes the shortest route has so much jam. You need a longer route, but which will take less time. Ahimaaz had mastered the geography of his place. And I want to encourage you to draw inspiration from this man and know that all talents are important, all gifts are important, even that which may sound like uh, it will not bring 
bread on the table, the running, the geography, all the gifts in your children. Buy them that guitar which they want to learn and encourage them. When they break it, don't scold them so hard. Maybe they have learned the lesson by breaking it. Uh, I want to encourage you to take the joy in serving the Lord as you bring up these talents, as you bring up these children, and even you, the adult, take joy in using all your talents and all your gifts because they are a gift from God and He blesses every discovery, development, and deployment of these gifts in His service. May you get the reward of finishing well like Ahimaaz did. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we pray that you'll give us the grace to develop these gifts and talents you've given us and to experience and share the joy of serving you with all that you have given us, even encouraging our children and our youth and our colleagues to do the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.